Today, I'm talking about one of the diseases that doctors miss most. Here are some of the symptoms. You're exhausted, you're tired, you can't get out of bed. Or your arms and legs are sore. You could have a constant backache, joint pain, or a throbbing headache, even brain fog. Is this your normal? If so, you may be one of six million people who have what is called fibromyalgia. Today, I wanna to get you to the right diagnosis. Joining me is Dr. Jennifer Cardle, who is at the forefront of treating patients with fibromyalgia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So could you please help folks understand what fibromyalgia is? Absolutely. Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain syndrome. It can be very debilitating for patients. Uh, patients often complain of a number of symptoms. Probably the main one is widespread pain. So they have pain all over their bodies, in the muscles, in the connective tissues. And usually this pain lasts for at least three months or longer. But in addition to the widespread pain, patients have other symptoms, such as the ones you mentioned, headache, fatigue, insomnia, etc. So it's really the combination of both the pain and these other symptoms that, that creates this condition. And, you know, it's sort of thought of almost as an invisible condition because quite honestly, you can look at a patient and really not see it on them. But on the inside, they're really struggling with it. So what kinds of folks are at risk for this? Well, this condition most commonly affects women. Um, this condition may run in families. We also know that it can coexist with other medical conditions, things like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, etc. Yeah. And we also know that sometimes, and this is a theory, that there may be stressors or traumas that actually might even bring on the condition in the first place. And I mean, should folks think of it as a life-threatening disorder? Actually, Dr. Oz, yes. It, it's shocking, but yes, this is a life-threatening disorder. Now, fibromyalgia is not a deadly condition. Mm -hmm. People can live very full lives with this condition, mm -hmm. but it is life-threatening. And when I say that, I mean mm -hmm. in the sense of the holistic sense. Patients' quality of life is affected. You know, I have patients in my practice that have fibromyalgia, and I've heard them say things like, you know, Dr. Cottle, I feel like I can't get up uh, out of bed in the morning because I have so much pain. I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Yeah. Uh, they can't live their life to the fullest. They can't go to work. They can't see their family and friends. So in this respect, yes, fibromyalgia absolutely threatens the quality of life that patients have. So you know, it takes folks, I'm going to share this with everybody, an average of three doctor visits three doctor visits before getting a proper diagnosis. Now, why is that? Right, it's, it's pretty alarming, actually, um, and it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, we have to keep in mind that fibromyalgia is a condition that there is no blood test or x-ray for. And this is one of the things that makes it so complex. That and the fact that every patient with fibromyalgia, they have many different symptoms, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. but every fibro patient presents very differently. So each fibro patient is, is usually different from the other. So when I went through medical school, for most of my practice, we didn't think fibromyalgia even existed. Why did it take so many years with all these patients giving us complaints that in retrospect were this condition for medicine to accept this was real? You bring up a really great point. You're absolutely right that in the medical community, um, even though these symptoms have been going on for years, it really wasn't until about 1990 that, we, that the medical community established diagnostic criteria for really diagnosing fibromyalgia. You know, this is a condition that the term hypochondriac or, oh, the patient's just stressed out or they're just overwhelmed, those are really inappropriate terms with this condition because we now know that this is truly a medical condition with uh, important diagnostic criteria and also important treatment options as well. So essentially what we're saying is you have to play a role in helping us, helping medicine understand your problem. So here are some main categories of fibromyalgia symptoms. Pain, you've heard that mentioned a couple times, fatigue and insomnia, depression and anxiety, and irritable bowel syndrome. There are many other symptoms, and they can vary from patient to patient, as Dr. Caudill mentioned. Now, I want you to meet Judy, who had most of these symptoms, and yet she spent years searching for the right diagnosis. About four years ago, my health took a dramatic turn. It all began like I had the flu. My body hurt, I was nauseous, dizzy, and I could not get out of bed. My doctor told me I had a virus, it was affecting my whole body. I couldn't say, oh, I have a headache, or oh, my legs hurt. It was just everywhere. I went to my ears, nose, and throat doctor, a neurologist. I even was telling my gynecologist. Any and every test they could do, they did. Nobody had any answers. The doctors told me that I was just stressed. At this point, I started to mentally break down. The doctors were making me feel like I was a hypochondriac. I was spending time and money trying to figure out what was wrong with me, and I was left with no answers and frustration. It was the worst year of my life. 
Finally, I went to one more doctor and he told me that indeed I did have something wrong. It was called fibromyalgia. And just somebody telling me that they could help me, I felt like, oh my God, I could breathe again. Thanks for sharing your story. So you spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort to get the right diagnosis. How did it feel when you were told that it was all in your head? I felt like I was mad, I was angry, I was upset, but I was scared because I went through test after test after test. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I had brain scans, I had sonograms, I had blood work, I had upper GIs, I had everything done, and they mm -hmm. kept saying, sorry. I mean, it, it angers me, I, I gotta say, because I, I hear these stories all the time, and I'm called about fibromyalgia by you, our viewers, all the time. And this is a very common scenario. In fact, I heard you had to bring your family with you yeah. to the doctor's office. Why is that? Because some, I, I felt like I needed an advocate to say, she's telling you the truth. You know, she can't get out of bed. She lives a very good life. You know, she's always happy. She's always doing. She's never sitting still. And here she is in bed 24-7. Did any doctor ever directly say you're a hypochondriac? Yeah, you know, I kept coming back to my doctors because I knew I was sick and I didn't know what was wrong. And the one doctor said, well, you know, maybe it's in your head, you know, like you're being a hypochondriac. I mean, I don't really know what to say, I'm speechless. I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I went home and I cried. I cried and I cried because then I started thinking, am I crazy? You know what I mean? I have a huge that. Yeah. social circle. You know, then I'm like, I'm not gonna tell anybody I'm sick anymore because if the doctors think I'm a hypochondriac, you know, my family and my friends might start thinking there's something wrong with me. It was very sad. So how'd you finally get the right diagnosis? Um, a year and a half later, you know, I'd been sick for the whole year off and on, usually three months at a time. Mm -hmm. And then a year and a half later, it came back real strong, real fast, and I was in the middle of planning something big. And I went back to my regular doctor and I said, I'm sorry, something is wrong with me and I need help now. And he had said to me, okay, I will send you to a rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. Within three months of meeting, I mean, within 15 minutes of meeting with my rheumatologist, he said, I know what you have, and I'm going to make you better. In 15 minutes? 15 minutes. But my regular doctor did say, your back might be up against a wall here. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. Most doctors don't think that fibromyalgia is real. So, you know. How did it feel that moment, 15 minutes into your office visit, when you had a diagnosis? I felt like I'm going to live again. You know what I mean? I'm going to be that person I was a year and a half ago. And, you know, I was trying to hide it from my kids. So I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to see their mom back. And, you know, we're going to get through this. And I'm going to sit down on the computer and I'm going to research this. I'm going to find out as much as I can. I was just so happy. Yeah. I got to say, I mean, the story that you're sharing with me, I wish it was unique. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cardo mentioned this is a classic scenario. There are millions of women who are wandering around right now. Because most people with fibromyalgia don't know they have it who are either feeling it's in their head or being told it's in their head. So what do you have to say to all those folks? You know, I love doctors. I think they're great. But you are the best advocate for yourself. And you have to say to the doctor, no, something is wrong. And you have to keep moving forward till you find the answers because you know yourself better than anybody else. And if I would have just quit, I feel like I'd still be homesick in bed. You probably wouldn't be still, and there are many people who still are at home watching right now because they can't get out of bed. Yeah. Who are walking around with a diagnosis like this or something else. This is not just about fibromyalgia. Right. This is about a lot of problems. We just don't have our arms around yet. Right. Because we just, you know, have a, this much of health figured out. We got this much more to figure out. Right. That's called doctor yes. to doctor. Yes. And we'll have an open discussion about sure. this. Has it gotten to that point now where we have to ask patients to strong arm their doctors? In a sense, yes. Uh, it's really important for patients to be advocates. I, I appreciate really what you're saying. This is actually something I say to my own patients all the time and even family and friends. The relationship between a patient and a doctor is just that. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. So you as a patient, me as a patient, you as a patient, we have to feel comfortable with our physicians. We have to feel like we can talk uh, to our doctor and that we're being heard. Doctors, on the other hand, we have to be good listeners. We have to do proper physical diagnosis and physical exams and also hear the patient's story. So this really is a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely agree that if you're not comfortable with your doctor, I've said this to many people, find someone else. Find someone who you really can have a productive collaboration with because that's especially what's needed uh, with this condition uh, in particular. Well, well, I'm proud of you for hunting and packing and not leaving you know, all that stuff behind because uh, it would have held you back. Yes, thank right. you. Thanks for your story.
I've heard chamomile tea can alleviate the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Is that true? There's no direct evidence that chamomile tea works to help fibromyalgia, but it can relax you and help you feel ready for sleep. So I'm back talking about fibromyalgia, and I don't want you wasting your time or your money anymore going from doctor to doctor to get the diagnosis that you need. Dr. Doddle, help us with this. What is the kind of doctor folks ought to be looking for advice from in order to make this diagnosis correctly? Sure. I think it's a great way uh, to start out, to start out with your primary care physician. Mm -hmm. That can be your family doctor, that can be your internist, but you might need a specialist, um, in which case you might see a rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. Now, a rheumatologist is a specialist who really focuses on musculoskeletal diseases as well as many others, mm -hmm. and they often see lots of fibromyalgia patients, so this is a great place to go. Um, we also think that neurologists might be a great uh, place to go as well because now we're learning so much more about how fibromyalgia affects the brain. So rheumatologists and neurologists, the two Absolutely. specialists you should all ask for if you're hot and pecking for the right diagnosis. All right, let's get the treatment. Sure. We know there are three FDA-approved medications that Absolutely. can help fibromyalgia symptoms, but you brought a unique therapy today that I adore. It's called osteopathic manipulative treatment. And Dr. Martin Levine is joining us. He's an osteopathic physician who uses these practices in his practice. Uh, so teach us a little bit, who would this be appropriate for? I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, Carol? Yes. Thanks for being the guinea pig today, Carol. <laughs> All right. So osteopathic manipulative treatment is performed by osteopathic physicians. It's really a way that physicians are able to diagnose and treat musculoskeletal problems with our hands. And really the idea is we're trying to help the body, the patient's body, heal itself. So Dr. Levine here, one of the things that he was doing initially was feeling for muscle spasms in our patient's neck, and he's now stretching out the, the, the neck muscles to kind of relieve some of those muscle spasms. Now it's important to remember that OMT, or osteopathic manipulative therapy, is uh, treatment is fantastic for fibro patients, but there are other treatment options, meditation, yoga, cognitive behavioral therapy, et cetera, but this is one great option. And, and ideally, who, who benefits the most from these treatments? Most fibro patients will benefit from it. If you're concerned about whether this is a good option for you, make sure you speak with your osteopathic physician about that. Uh, but most patients can really tolerate um, OMT very well and actually be very successful. Uh, Dr. Lee now is doing a structural exam on our patient's back, looking for other muscle spasms. And now one of the things he's going to do is he'll lie our patient on her back, um, and this maneuver really is an, an attempt to um, uh, restore the, the patient's body movements and joints back to their normal range of motion. Oh, I hear the cracking. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Carol's okay under there. <laughs> just, stop moaning and groaning, Carol. It's, it's Bill's character. <laughs> and so um, this is one of the treatments that he routinely performs, as many osteopathic physicians do. This is great for a lot of um, pain conditions. OMT can be used for things other than fibromyalgia. So other chronic pain conditions, headache, um, arthritis, uh, low back pain, you name it. But this is, a, this is a great option. How are you doing? You okay in there? I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, you keep working here with Carolyn Joy. This actually does look very uh, helpful. I, I've actually referred patients for this. Wonderful. And I think these type of osteopathic manipulations are worth considering as an alternative, especially for conditions like fibromyalgia. Absolutely. So let me speak to everybody about this for a second. If you're experiencing some of the symptoms we have talked about today, we have put a quiz online to help you decide whether you are at risk. You can go to DrOz.com and take that quiz. Now listen, I know fibromyalgia is a hot button issue for you. So our experts will be answering your fibromyalgia questions. Tweet me at hashtag OzAnswers. And you'll be able to help be part of that conversation. Coming up next, the thing you need to take in order to get five years off your face and look younger. Find out what it is. It's coming up. <laughs>